Hello, everybody. I'm very excited to be joined by Jake with Skydance Brewing and Brian from Robot House to discuss their This is Native campaign. We're looking forward to diving into how this came to be, learn more about the process and the impact it will have. But first, let's meet Brian and Jake. Jake, tell us a little about who you are and what you do. Hey, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm founder and owner of Skydance Brewing Company. So uh, my main responsibilities there is just, you know, CEO stuff and making sure that the business grows and uh, leading the team. Also, I do, uh, I'm the head brewer, um, head janitor, all that good stuff. Um, I'm also the vice chairman of the Iowa tribe of Oklahoma. Um, so that's actually where I'm at today is in my my office. You can tell I'm not here full time because there's almost nothing in my office. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's being a nutshell. I think that office might need a rebrand. It does need a rebrand. I'll have to have Brian send some folks over here. Yeah. And Jake, when did Skydance open? Uh, we opened technically we opened in 2018. We've started uh, brewing out of a co-op brewery at that point in time called the Brewers Union. And then a year ago, this past October, we opened our own location with a tap room in Automobile, which is a downtown district of Oklahoma City. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to visit someday. Yeah. Now, Brian, you're up. What do you do in the world of beer and the world of business in general? Well, uh, I walked down four blocks to uh, Skydance and drank on a on a pretty regular basis. So it's it's uh, uh, pretty handy that that we are off Automobile Alley as well. Um, but yeah, we've uh, next April will be 20 years, the 20, 20 year anniversary of me starting Robot House in my living room. Uh, so I'm the founder and I've got uh, two partners, an art director, uh, a soon to start creative strategist and an awesome junior designer named Jazz. Uh, and so we have a lot of fun working with all kinds of different, mostly small businesses, um, but we've, we've been developing a specialty in uh, in craft beer, just because we love to drink it, we love to brand it, we love to tell its story. Uh, and and beer people are just awesome and fun and great, you know, to, it's, I think there's a lot of similarities in the passion that they have uh, with their business and the passion that, that we have with what we do. And so it's really about combining that to, to create some really cool stuff. I love it. And it was a pleasure spending so much time with you both in St. Louis and Virginia at CBP Connect. It was great to get to know you on that level. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Quick, quick follow up for you. Is it a requirement one to have an awesome name to work at Robot House? Because I feel like everybody you rattle off, your last name included, are just really memorable. Uh, yeah, that's the, the uh, Jennings is our, our new creative strategist who starts on Thursday. And so uh, and then Jazz is uh, when she finishes school in the spring and uh, we're going to bring her on full time. And so uh, so Project Jazzinings has been the uh, uh, what we've been calling it uh, internally. But uh, but yeah, no, it's just, you know, um, just 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 luck, I think. And, you know, and again, being small, just being kind of a small boutique creative shop. You know, we, um, uh, you know, we, we rarely hire. So when we do, we always make sure that, you know, they're the right fit and, and unique name is always kind of cherry on top, I think. Very fun. Now, Brian, you mentioned that Skydance is only a few blocks from your office. So is that how you two first met? Were you simply a customer? Or how did you and Jake first, you know, really have that first conversation? Well, ironically, it was right about a year ago, and um, that wasn't the ironic part. The ironic part is that I wanted to pick his brain because I had, we had just joined uh, CBP, and so I wanted to, I was, you know, wanting to put together uh, some thoughts for a uh, presentation for us to pitch for uh, CBP Connects. And so, um, so uh, Jake, uh, I think, uh, uh, Tabby with the um, uh, Oklahoma Craft Brewers Association, um, connected us and walked down there and wound up talking for like an hour or two and just really hit it off the beer was great uh jake and i just just clicked immediately and and talked a lot about kind of what you know sort of the, what i wanted to what i think you know the main question of sort of like what would a you know uh, a brewer brewery owner want mm -hmm. to hear from you know somebody that you know does branding like we do uh, and that really led to a conversation about kind of Jake's branding journey and kind of where he was at and where he wanted to be. And Jake, when Brian first reached out and I guess Tabby connected you all, what were your expectations for that first, you know, pint you had together? So uh, my fiance, Bobby, always gives me crap about that day because uh, I 
I don't know, we were in the middle of packaging or whatever, and I had this little meeting on my calendar uh, that she she has access. She kind of manages my calendar, you know, because uh, anyways, women are better at that than, than we are, I think. So, um, but anyways, uh, so that meeting was supposed to be like a 20 minute meeting is what I had on the calendar and ended up, we just all ended up talking for so long. I mean, at that point in time, I was just going to, you know, I was just trying to, like he said, give a point of view of uh, somebody that may be wanting to hear what the stuff that he had to talk about, you know? And so I didn't really have any expectations of us ever even actually working together. And I think there was maybe some circumstances even at the time prevented that a little bit, but uh, yeah, so that it was definitely, we definitely hit it off. Like you said. Now, Jake, you know, when that meeting came and you and Brian, Brian was just there to pick your brain, really, did you have any current frustrations or unmet expectations with your current branding at the time? Yeah, I would that at the time, our branding, especially on our core lineup, was maybe not um, what what we really wanted as far as being able to st- tell the story of who we are and our, and our brand. Um, as I said earlier, you know, we started at a co-op brewery and we, you know, very little funding and, you know, obviously not even enough funding to even build our own place at the time. Right. And so everything that we did at that point in time was just, let's just get started, including coming up with packaging, you know, and somebody local that we work with, um, on apparel stuff was the only digital design type person that I knew. So, uh, we threw them a little bit of cash and, you know, let's see what you could come up with. And um, back at that point in time, it was more based around some uh, patterns and just color changes. And um, I think when people look at the Native American brewery, they, they expect to see more artwork, uh, more storytelling. And so um, the, the previous package design just didn't accomplish that. So. Brian, and don't hate me on this one, but the first time I ever got a logo done, I think I paid about five bucks for it. So yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think you know it's it's a learning experience when you realize there's people who can better help tell your story. And, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I love to hear your thoughts on just the storytelling aspect of what goes behind the brand. Well, and that's I think kind of our special sauce is you know there are a lot of great designers out there. There are a lot of folks that just do logos, that just do packaging. Um, and if, you know, and sometimes that's all somebody needs, but what we do, it's really about, again, that passion, that story, uh, what's special, what's unique, um, with something like Skydance, it's a little easier in that, you know, a, a native owned brewery is, is a pretty, you know, a pretty rare beast. And, and so, um, and I, you know, Jake, not only the proximity, but, Jake had gotten a lot of really great uh, press, uh, you know, with the, with the launch and um, Oklahoma City is kind of a big, small town, you know, so uh, um, so been hearing a lot about it. Um, uh, but yeah, the you know, for us, it, it really is about, you know, it's about creating stuff that looks like nobody else that is unique and authentic to that business and to the people who are the business. Um, and and really having that point of view and having that voice uh and that's what we really love to do and that's i think a a, a big difference between a five dollar logo um and a little couple more bucks you know that we charge for for doing full brand development um and really digging in and creating that thing that nobody else can say or do because it is all built in conjunction with the, the the client, with the brewer, uh, fully telling their original personal story. So the conversation changed a little bit from you picking Jake's brain about what you should speak on at the workshop to you realizing that there could be some synergies here to possibly work together. So when you took things to the next level and you decided, you know, we want to work together, we want this to be a partnership, what were the goals each of you had? Jake dive in. Me? Okay. So, well, again, to me, it was just, first off, I felt like our old package design missed some stuff that um, that maybe a professional like Brian and, and his team 
could could bring to the table, which is things that should be in order and in the place they need to be in on a shelf uh, when customers are laying their eyes on it. You know, um, for one instance is the fact that like I didn't even notice this until we got the first labels in to kind of proof them is our old um, can design for our top selling beer, which is a hazy IPA called Fancy Dance. Um, why is it called uh, Fancy Dance, Jake? Uh, so that's a dance that we do in our powwows here. So, uh, you know, anybody in Oklahoma probably kind of knows what that means. Part you know? of the story, so, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when the when the new labels came in, we wrapped them on a blank can and set it down. I was walking around. We were actually packaging the old label dance still trying to go through those cans and i looked at the palette that we had that was probably 15 feet away from me and then i looked over at the can with the new design on it that was about 30 feet away from me and i could clearly read the name of the beer and the style on the new design whereas on the on the old ones we were using i couldn't because the color scheme blended too much and that kind of stuff you know, just little things that not everybody thinks about when you're trying to come up with something that's going to strike a customer's eye on a shelf. And so that was a goal. Obviously the storytelling, having more graphic, more, um, more storytelling to it, but also doing it in a fun way. I think sometimes our native people, we kind of get this uh, stigma of being super serious and taking everything we say or do or move that we make as being sacred, you know, but in the reality is all you got to do is come to like uh, one of my family's Thanksgivings or something. And you see so much humor and quality. And I wanted that to kind of show a little bit in the, in the package design. So uh, we took it from being that just straight, just pattern, you know, to having more fun with it. And so those were some of my, my goals. But again, really, it was just to step our game up and look more professional, look look more like a real brand out on the shelf. So it seems like a lot of the things you say are to make your brand stand out more on the shelf, which is obviously mm -hmm. really important. When you initially met Brian, was the storytelling aspect of it something you wanted to focus on? Or was that something Brian helped bring out? I mean, it's definitely something that, that we wanted to focus on. I just always had a hard time coming up with like how we're going to do that. And I think that's where Brian's team really, really stepped in and, and was able to help help illustrate that. And I think even like in that one, that first meeting we had, I think we we came up with the kind of our little slogan that we have on the cans. And, and it was really just I had said it just in passing. And Brian, like, no, that's it right there. That's well, the we're going to dive into that in just a yeah. moment. Now, Brian, what about you from the branding agency perspective? What were your goals when working with Jake and Skydance? Well, on, on one level, we want to work with more brewers, uh, Jake's size. Um, and, uh, and, and then really just, you know, meeting Jake, hearing his story, uh, you know, hearing, you know, him point to himself and say, this is native. And, you know, in terms of, you know, Jake's personal journey, you know, and, you know, um, and I don't want to, you know, tell Jake's story for him, but just, you know, about, you know, Jake, you know, you know, that on his 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 mom's side, being native on his mom's side, uh, German on his dad's side, I'm mostly German with a little bit of Polish, you know, uh, so, you know, so just the fact that, you know, Jake does not have the traditional native look, he's not, Jake is not a stereotype by any means, you know, but he's native, and, and it is a very important story to him, it's such a part of his DNA, um, that just the opportunity to uh, and then when you first meet somebody and within that, you know, longer than 20 minute, you know, beer that you have, uh, they basically kind of give you their tagline, um, you know, as, as you know, my main focus is, is writing uh, amongst the team. Um, you know, I'm just like, I need, I need that to exist, right? You know, uh, and, um, and also I think part of it was, you know, I've lived here most of my life. Um, again not native at all but i'm an oklahoman and native culture is such a part of oklahoma oklahoma's identity and i've grown up with with it always being present so like i knew what fancy dance meant you know um i i was familiar with a lot of the terminology that maybe those who didn't grow up here uh wouldn't be familiar with uh and then just something like 
Reservation Dogs, the the show on FX and Hulu. Um, and you know, one of the beers that we you know uh, redesigned is Res Dog. Um, and uh, and it's such again, it's they're not telling my story, but it feels very familiar to me just because it's a very Oklahoma vibe. And and as a uh, brand advocate and evangelist for the best things about our city and state, you know, uh, that's one of our goals is to find those opportunities to take those stories and elevate them and really help them shine. And so that was just that we knew it was going to be fun. We knew the beer was going to be good. You know, we already, we already very much knew that, you know, personally, um, you know, and so it was just like, you know, this is something we can really sink our teeth into. And at the end of it, uh, it's, there's, a, there's even more than we thought in terms of like, this is a substantial thing we can share to the world, you know, uh, about, you know, the, about what we can do in working with a great person, a great, you know, team, a great brewery to create something all new and, uh, and just at, you know, at the level that it deserves. Absolutely. So now what I want to dive into now is just the name of the campaign itself. This is native. Jake, you hinted that it's something you said in one of the early meetings with Brian. Is it a phrase you would use before or did you just flow off your tongue in that, you know, conversation and it just resonated with Brian? How did that come to be? So I, I don't I don't recall if the <clears throat> the meeting that I have with Brian was before or after this particular situation <laughs> that had happened on social media. But um, around that time, um, we had dealt with um, somebody non-native and actually from another brewery in town um, was in our tap room and just really questioning, you know, the branding, the, the, the same American brewery and that kind of stuff. And, and mainly because, you know, like he said, I don't look like, a, you know, what some people think a Native American is supposed to look like. Um, and so, and they had some kind of derogatory things to say that really, I, I usually stay away from like stuff on social media when it comes to politics or any of that kind of stuff. But this, this time I just, it was so personal that I couldn't really, you know, hold back. And so I'd written this big, long post about, um, you know, you might think you know what Native American is from your movies you've watched and the history books that, that you might have looked at when you were in school and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, we have this little thing in this country called colonization, you know, and a lot of our Native American tribes, their cultures and heritage were, you know, they tried to eradicate it, you know, they tried to eliminate that. And, and so one of the results of that colonization is a lot of Native Americans look the way I do. You know, we don't, um, you know, we're all, most of us are biracial. We, I think our tribe, we recently, last year, we lost our first, uh, our last uh, full blood tribal member. And so um, as we go along generations, you're, you know, more and more tribal than I do. But one of the things I'd said in that post was, uh, you know, when you look at me, you know, I want you to see colonization, you know, the result of that, but also this is native, you know, this is, this is what, who we are and, and we're here, we're still here. We're here now and we're doing lots of great, not just, you know, uh, the, the things you saw in a movie, a single tear or the, and we're not just the trail of tears, you know, we're, we're business owners and, and in Oklahoma, we're the, the, you know, some of the biggest economic powers around. So that's kind of where it came from. And I think maybe in that conversation, so living on that, uh, maybe a little anger that I had from that comment that had happened. And so that it just came out. So in the good old world of the Internet, how did that post go over? Actually, it went over really well. Um, I don't think I had any negative comments on it. And of course, a lot of my uh, Iowa family, native friends, and then even a uh, a news, um, a news, a news outlet that one of the tribes, uh, the Muscogee Nation runs, they reached out and came out and did an interview about it. And so we had a big article in that. And then I looked on their stuff and it, and there was a lot of good reaction from that story as well. So no, thank you for sharing that. So Brian, you know, when you heard that story and you heard this is native, what was going through your mind? 
You know, I, I, I think for us, um, one of our, you know, being a small shop, you know, and and luckily at the point where we can say no to projects and clients that aren't the right fit, um, which feels amazing the first time you do it. Uh, so, um, so we are, uh, you know, pretty choosy, you know, in terms of who we work with and, you know, um, but at the same time, you know, we want to, uh, we want to tell, we want to amplify voices that haven't, you know, haven't been center stage. You know, we want to, when we have opportunities, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and where we can come in and, and use our gifts to, uh, to help tell somebody else's story, you know, so that it's still, again, it's not ours, but, but, you know, through the collaboration, through that relationship that we build, you know, we can, you know, we can, we can bring, bring that elevation to it. Um, so really, I think for me, it was like, just, you know, not only, you know, is Jake going to be great to work with, not only is this going to be a great brand and a great opportunity for us, but this fits our ethos in terms of what we want to invest in um, to, you know, to kind of uh, bring, you know, uh, uh, I guess, it, and again, kind of speaking in terms of sort of like local culture, local community, the, you know, what we think, you know, deserves to, to have that stronger presence and, you know, that, uh, that, that more, uh, that more elevated uh, look and feel that, that can hopefully gain attention and gain momentum, um, especially when it comes to, you know, Jake's vision for the future of the brewery, of the tribe, of, you know, just, you know, the native community, you know, all together, as well as bringing everybody together so that there can be an educational component to it, too. So just there is, you know, just so many rich opportunities to to learn and, uh, you know, and, and and that's that's really fun too. being, you know, working on something and and learning while you're doing it and being exposed to to new things. It's, you know, it, that's that's kind of the best case scenario. If you don't know why you're doing it, then why are you doing it? <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. I, no, I, I love it. No, Jake, you know, so how did Robot House help you work through and best vocalize your vision for the Skydance brand? I mean, I think a lot of que asking a lot of questions, you know, I mean, we had several meetings, um, just really them asking all kinds of questions and allowing us to just think out loud and, and, and you know, talk about everything from our culture to uh, maybe a little politics in there from time to time and just things to get to know us. Right. And I feel like um, that was a pretty I've been through a lot of the, those types of meetings before from our casinos that I used to run and stuff. But with them, it was a little more detailed than what I'd been through before. And um, I just always sensed like there was a, a big time sense of curiosity um, on their part. And honestly, like a lot of times when when as at our tribe, when we deal with other businesses that are non native businesses, sometimes it um, there's just a big bridge to gap, you know, and I think a lot of times it's because they're operating on a bunch of assumptions and things they think they know about us um, with Brian. I mean, they just they literally just ask questions and 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 waited for us to tell us exactly everything that we that we wanted out there. And they just I don't know the process of guiding us through it was just amazing. And um, I think as you'll see, I think like right off the bat, the, right off the bat, they knocked it out of the park. You know, there was not a a lot of back and forth on the design. There was a little bit, but not a lot. And it was really they just they they did a good job of paying attention to what we had to say. So no, no Jake, you know. I love hearing all that. I love about, I love the creative process and your use of the word curiosity because the fact that mm -hmm. Brian was curious, he was invested in this, he was truly interested in it, it makes for a great partnership. But when mm -hmm. he was throwing all these questions at you with, with their team, is there any question that surprised you? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think the way they the way they really went about it was um almost leading us into asking our own questions <laughs> sometimes, you know. Um and I think sometimes you 
for for somebody like me, I ha- I know in the end when I look at something like this if it's what I want or not. But sometimes I can't tell somebody how to get there. And really, what he all, all he did was just a, find a way to get me to verbalize it. You know, so Brian, what are your memories from that process? Well, um, one of the one of the things over the years is we've developed our process. Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll send the questions and, and, but we give clients like a week to answer them, you know? So it's all, it's very reflective, you know, and, and occasionally we'll even say, you know, read through the 20 questions, 25 questions, uh, and don't answer them right away. Just read through them, then think about them. And then when you're ready, come back to it. And, you know, we, we, we don't want anybody to just kind of like rush through one of these things just to get it done. Like it's homework, you know? It's not, it has to, you know, it's, it's not, we don't, we never want it to feel like homework. We want it to feel like he, these are the things that's all, it's all the stuff that um, isn't in your conscious mind about what you do every day, but it's really about, you know, what, what drives you, you know, what are those sort of subconscious things? And so sometimes it takes really thinking about like, what is it about what I do every day that gets me out of bed? You know, why, why do I love this? Um, what is the vision here, you know? And so, um, so yeah, that was, you know, they, uh, Jake and Bobby, you know, had really great, uh, uh, really great answers. Uh, the, the occasions where they were, they kind of had different perspectives on things is always fun. Um, cause that always leads to interesting conversations and, and more, uh, you know, uh, sort of brainstorming from there really. And that's, that's really the point of it. And especially, when you are working with, you know, uh, and again, we mostly work with small groups, but it's always good to get a few different voices in the mix because you'll hear repeated things that are kind of the core elements of the brand, but then you get, everybody has kind of their own opinion, their own perspective and sharing that, um, leads to some interesting revelations sometimes always, you know, positive ones when it comes to the brand and when it comes to, you know, where we need to go. And so that's really for us, those, you know, the, those conversations, the meetings, the research that we do, there's a ton of research looking at, you know, kind of who's, you know, who's in the marketplace, you know, what, what some inspirational brands are. Um, and, and just really, it's, it's about navigating. It's about, you know, getting to know them. And that's a big part of it. We're building a brand, but we're building a relationship. We're building trust. Um, because that's what we do is, you know, when we present a brand, we present a brand. We don't say, here's three logos, which one do you like? You know, I used to do that and sometimes it would be successful and sometimes it would be exhausting because then 17 revisions later, you know, you wind up with something that nobody really loves. Um, but now with this process really getting to know the client really getting to you know i mean we make friends basically you know it sounds kind of cheesy but you know we uh we really they open themselves up and you know in the process it's not about us but we we are you know we're building it together so we are putting ourselves into it as well um so uh so yeah so it's it's really illuminating um and just, you know, uh, just some of the stories and, and even the, the we, we renamed one of the beers um, and it was something I was familiar with because my sister-in-law, my brother's wife, um, uh, is, I think, half Choctaw, I think. Um, and so, so the, the, the concept of uh, Indian time, which was the, the new name for, um, for what previously had been Mosquito Hawk, uh, came up and uh, and it felt like it was part of what Jake and when he was mentioning earlier about the lightheartedness, the humor that is maybe not as as familiar to folks as the you know Italian American actor with the tear in his eye pretending to be an Indian in the you know commercial uh, that was bankrolled by the plastics industry. Um, so uh, so being able to you know uh, again kind of like uh, work together and na- navigate that balance of, you know, that there's humor, but there is seriousness. There's, there's history and there's tragedy, but it's not about the tragedy, but we're not, 
we're not going to shy away from it either, you know, so which is is a challenge. Um, and, but I think that, that it just encompasses so much. There's a lot of room at, for all of it and all with the idea of the end result being a net positive and about something that can bring everybody together and 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 educate people. So that was, you know, uh, for us, that 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 was a big fun part of of the process and just just again just listening just you know just very thoughtfully uh uh you know kind of walking through the steps to make sure that we want to make sure where we landed where we where we hit was exactly where we needed to be you packed on a lot of really great words in that just now, Brian. Now, one thing I want to focus on now is, you know, quite a bit of capturing what is native is showing what is not native. Why is this an important angle for us to understand and for you to show? And I'd love to hear both of your thoughts on this one. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think for us, it's just like changing some stereotypes, right? Um, I think uh, even though in Oklahoma, like if you've lived in Oklahoma for more than a few months, you know, a lot of people who are native, um, even in Oklahoma though, there's still just a lot of things that people, um, just misconceptions, the wrong idea about stuff, you know? And so I think some of that is really just trying to, trying to repair that, that false, um, idea of, you know, who we are as people. And so I think, um, but at the same time, I think what we really focused on was just showing what is native, you know, and not, not trying to do too much with, you know, showing everybody that it's not, you know, you, you have the wrong idea. It's here's the right idea. Come with us. We understand why you have the wrong idea. But, um, and so for me, I think that's really a part of it though, is that we, you can't, you can't tell you can't show people what the right thing is unless pointing out here's here's where you, you kind of had it wrong a little bit. So, and Brian, what were your thoughts on that? You know, why was it important for you to show both sides? Well, I think and part of it, you know, like Jake was saying, it really is. It's it's almost it's about sort of unlearning things. I think um, you know, and 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 exploring some of that. Uh, you know, like you know, I haven't seen. The, the Disney movie Peter Pan since I was a kid and it's super racist. Oh my God. I had, I, you know, just, just like watch, looking at some stuff on YouTube. It's like, and you know, like you, you grow up and, and there's, you know, the don't pollute commercial. There's Tonto in old lone, you know, uh, I'm sure I'm dating myself. I'm in my early fifties, you know, so, so this was, you know, kind of, um, and there, and there wasn't much. And, um, and I think that the culture is shifting to uh, give more opportunities to tell these stories. And I think there's hunger for these stories, and I think that that the communities themselves, again, with you know, a show like Res, uh, Reservation Dogs with Rutherford Falls on Peacock, you know, it's it's these are native performers, writers, you know, helping to tell these stories and craft these narratives. Um, but I think it's important to uh, to kind of see where it's gone wrong you know johnny depp as tonto in the lone ranger movie which wasn't that long ago you know stuff like that you know um uh mascots and uh characters on you know butter packaging and things like that it's it was it, it was all very you know the this especially i think with natives you know it was all almost sort of like this a, a you know it's it's a it's almost like a cartoon character it's a mask it's 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 a it's a, it's a, it's a, a costume you know that that there was not there's it's it's been uh so whether purposeful or not you know um kind of denigrated by you know by by these you know these uses of these you know of these very important things that 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 don't belong to the people that are, you know, uh, you know, telling these these false stories, you know. So I think it's really just sort of like here's here's what you you know here's what you you're thinking maybe, but this isn't it. But you know, it's you know it's Jim Thorpe, and that's one of the nice things about growing up in Oklahoma. You know who Jim Thorpe is, you know for sure. You know he he's a big part of you know of, of history. You know it's. You know, um, Deb Deb Holland. You know, the first Native Secretary of the Interior. You know, it's um, 
you know, all of these, uh, you know, this, this, all these stories that are finally being told and, and a generation. And I think, you know, in America, mostly that wants to hear them, you know, um, that is open, open to them. Uh, so, um, so that's kind of, you know, really sort of, you know, it, it essentially, it, and, I, and I think just for us, you know, you, you know, you don't know, you can't, you can't really like, you know, uh, see the future until you acknowledge the past. And I think that especially in America right now, there's a lot of people who don't want to acknowledge the past. And I, and so again, not to get political, but it's, it's true that these are, you know, things that should be, people should be aware of. And then, you know, how do we move forward in truth and in honesty and really as, you know, uh, as a community to, you know, to, you know, embrace, you know, what, you know, what the opportunities can be. Now, Jake, Skydance is so much more than a brewery. Was this always your goal? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I will say when we when we first, you know, sat down and, and started writing a business plan and said, I'm going to open a brewery. Um, honestly, a lot of the Native American stuff was not um, like the forefront of my mind at that time. I just wanted to open a brewery, you know. I mean, I was making beer in my garage for every weekend for years. And, and Bobby probably wanted you out of the garage, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then what, what was interesting was at the time I was working in my casinos here for our tribe and I just, I just felt like as I was, as I was talking to people about, Hey, I'm going to open this brewery one day and stuff. I, I remember feeling like I could never do it, you know? And there were a lot of our people that grew up here on, in, in our area where our tribe is from the small rural area in Northern Oklahoma who grew up thinking the same way, like, man, I don't know if I could do like start a business. Like, I don't know if I could be a CEO of a company. And I started realizing how much they just needed to see somebody like them doing it. And I remember just literally thinking, man, I'm starting to listen to these podcasts I'm hearing. And I'm, I'm always listening to people's stories of how they started their brewery. And the more I did that, the more I learned that they weren't much different than me. They grew up same, maybe the same way I did. They weren't all like, graduates of the best college or they didn't all come from money and that kind of stuff and it made me feel like i could do it and so that told me like man these our tribal members our uh, our young natives they need to see somebody like them that comes from where they came from do it and at that point in time i said i've got to be that i can't just be the guy that doesn't look native with a beard that owns a brewery i, I have to tell people who I am and what and where I come from so that somebody, one of our young Iowa tribal members or whoever it is, will see somebody like them do this business and hopefully we're successful and it, and it motivates them to be able to do what I did. And so that became like a driving force into what we do. And to, to this day, it's probably, you know, outside of, you know, making sure we stay alive and run a successful business. That's probably my, my biggest thing that we try to do with, with events in the tap room or storytelling through our beer names. All of it comes from making sure that we're representing the best way we can our people but also being a great example to uh, other Native Americans and, and and showing people that we're, you know, we're a successful people and we're still here. I love your mission and I love your vision and I can't wait to visit. I know I said it earlier, but I truly can't <laughs> wait to visit your tap room. Well, Bobby's think, been asking where you're at. So. I, know. <laughs> I think now is a great time to take a look at some of the campaign. I'm going to pull it up real quick and I'd love to have you, Brian, just walk us through what we're looking at. Sure. Yeah, uh, we've got a, a few slides. Um, uh, we're right now. We're looking at uh, Skydance Brewing. This is native. Um, so we we basically took the uh, the typography, uh, uh, existing typography, the brand for Skydance Brewing, and then um, Adam, one of uh, uh, my design partners here, um, created the typography um, uh, for the uh, uh, for the theme. Um, so we wanted something that uh has just uh, there's it's it's very colorful you know uh that was a big part of it too was really researching a lot of um of native colors and, and of, of just you know the the amazing 
uh, outfits that you know that the, that are worn at powwows, and and you know, so we wanted to to try to make this as bold and and colorful and uh, and again viewable from thirty feet away as as we could. So um, this this really fun. Um, uh, uh, typography for the this is native uh, uh, brand theme uh, that balances out well with uh, with the uh, the skydance brewing uh, typography um, but again just has you know this this innate colorfulness activity you know and that's a big part of it too is we wanted something that had a lot of motion that had a lot of vibrancy to it and so we uh, that was a big goal in terms of color palettes and in terms of, of how we approached the uh, the visuals. You want to go to the next one there, Brian? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, feel free. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so yeah, so here's a, a fancy dance, um, which is uh, is essentially the kind of the flagship uh, um, a beer, uh, the uh, hazy IPA. Uh, it's amazing and delicious. Um, and so one of the great things about this opportunity was um, all four of us uh, current, you know, full time, you know, for uh, robots here. Uh, this was very much, you know, took a village. You know, I uh, wrote all the copy. We've got uh, some really fun um, uh, brand copy uh, on the uh, uh, on the label. Uh, big, this is native in there. Um, uh, again, like I said, Adam uh, did the typography uh, for the uh, the names. Brett uh, did the uh, uh, did the design, and then Lauren, who's our uh, art director, and she's just been with us since May. So this was actually an early project that she was able to sink her teeth into. She's an amazing illustrator, and so um, we all worked together uh, to and and even you know had some spirited discussions, uh, you know, about you know uh, some you know making sure that the style was right, making sure the direction was right. We liked this idea of you know these these bright colors on a darker background. We wanted to make sure that the background wasn't going to be too dark, that it really struck a, a good balance. Uh, and then especially just you know like Jake said, he really wanted something that was going to be strong and readable. And so you know at the when when you're seeing the the can straight on, you know we've got this you know this really nicely sized you know circular logo. We've got the name really big. Um, the uh, the style is uh, is very visible underneath, um, you know, uh, and then just uh, with each of these um, wanting to kind of find uh, images that that sort of spoke about the kind of history and modern and future applications. And so uh, Lauren had drew these uh, these shoes, different different styles of shoes. Uh, with ornate, um, you know, uh, native uh, uh, decor, you know, with with feathers and beads, and um, you know, just wanted to kind of find that really fun balance of the not necessarily the stereotype, but sort of like the uh, familiar iconography, and then how can we kind of push that into a uh, a more modern and forward thinking style and uh, and detail, so. Uh, uh, had a lot of fun with that. Um, Res Dog uh, as the uh, the blonde ale again. You know, Jake, you've got a big smile on your face on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I smile every time I look at these because, like, Fancy Dance is my baby. You know, I, I'm an IPA guy, and so just seeing what they did with that really made me smile. And then, of course, the dogs. I'm a huge dog person, but also, as he'll tell you, you know, it's re some references that that'll go into it that really plays well. So I don't know. Every every time I get a chance to look at these and talk to somebody about it, I smile because, like I said, it's, it came out exactly what. I wish I could have came up with myself. So, so I absolutely love the artwork. When, when Brian showed you for the first time, is there anything that jumped out to you that just blew your mind? Oh, I definitely think those images. So whether it was the shoes or the, or the dogs, like um, I think it was because we wanted to be, have fun and and have an artistic side to it. And I think we were trying to accomplish so many things <laughs> with this new package design that I wasn't sure. I, I honestly thought in the end when they presented to us that we were going to have to pick and choose like what was our priorities, you know. And and so I think but I do think that the they were able to make us not have to pick and choose, you know, and these the, the 
definitely the images. And and then I will say, every time I look at it, the font that, that he talked about earlier really sticks out to me because we said we wanted to have fun and with it. And I feel like it's a fun font. I, I know that sounds weird, but it's a fun font. And it is so, a fun font. It makes you want to dance a little bit. Yeah. And, and I definitely wanted to point out, too, that like one of our other things we wanted them to help us with was – being the native craft brewer in in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma, our our retail accounts, so particularly chains, WalMarts, grocery stores, stuff like that, they really they they wanted us to be able to push that it's a native owned uh, you know business, um, that it's a native brewed product, and if you're going to use that native branding, we need to be able to show the customers, especially if somebody that's native walks by and sees this native branding being used on a, on a label, they don't want, they want to make sure they know that this is Nate, this, the people behind it are native, right. And that they're not just using it. And so I think the way they did that at the bottom also just, I mean, they accomplished all of those things. So. Back Everybody loves the dogs. Everybody yeah. loves the dogs. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, when, yeah. you know, uh, Lauren is, is you know, right next to me uh, and, and you know, just peeking over her shoulder and I was just like, oh, this is, yeah, you know, um, we're still, you know, I, I think, I think once, once Jake put, starts putting these on shirts and, uh, you know, tank tops and, and everything, you know, Nick, I think these are going to sell like gangbusters because I won't want to say it right now. I won't. Want yeah. To when they're we just, were at. When we've been at beer festivals, the we a couple times now we've been able to bust these out at beer festivals, and you know a blonde ale is not always the most exciting uh, beer at a beer festival, but it's amazing now how many people go for that first because they they're like I got to try the one with the dogs on it. So yeah, yeah, it, it's de definitely definitely a favorite, um, and and just just the the, the colors and the, the palette, you know, um, you know, bringing in like oranges and yellows and and hot pinks, you know, on this sort of like, you know, deep purple, uh, you know, and, and again, having to juggle all of these different things, and then the, the hierarchy of it too, making sure everything, uh, everything, you know, it's like, if everything's important, nothing's important. So you have to figure out how, you know, how somebody is going to read it in what order they need to see things and so that was a big part of it in terms of really balancing out logo title style uh the you know the the native messaging the you know the the copywriting the imagery you know so it's it, a, a whole lot goes into it um but uh but yeah it just we were you know personally just thrilled like i i when when before right as you're we working i was like i can't wait i can't wait to <laughs> to show these off you know so, so often then, when we think branding we just think logos and imagery but just looking at this can for res dogs and all the other artwork you've showed today it's such a beautiful mix of the text with the beautiful you know little dogs we're looking at right now it just comes together as a whole and it's so powerful i would yeah, the and, and also those are the little things I was talking about that somebody like Brian can come up with that we struggled with in the past. Like he just talked about the order that people see things like that's not something that we thought of with the previous design at all in any way. And then what you're saying, just everything coming together. I mean, it's, it's a talented, talented group of people. Over well, there. in all honesty, when I'm looking at this label, I don't know what I see first. Do I see that this is native? <laughs> Do I see res dogs? Do I see the, like the little dog looking directly at me with the purple over his eyes? I'm not sure, but it's all jumping at make me and making me so curious about Skydance Brewing, which then comes front center. Yep. Brian, and do you have any more graphics you'd like to share? One more, yeah. Uh, uh, one last thing. We uh, uh, one of the uh, benefits of us having had you know uh, quite a few years in in crappier branding is also knowing what's going to pass what's what needs to be on there what's going to you know it's it's not you know uh there all the the regulations you know that everything you know needs to get you know thumbs up during the you know the, during the process it's good to know that going in so that you're not accidentally leaving things off that you know is you know is going to shut you down or or shut down sales if if it's not on there um so yeah so this was uh uh indian time and I'll, I'll let jake tell that story but this was this was a an interesting challenge in terms of 
uh, you know, renaming a beer, kind of telling a, an all new story uh, with a beer that had popularity. Um, and so wanting to make sure that we created something that uh, was going to make sense in terms of, uh, you know, telling something fresh and, um, you know, maintaining the momentum that the style had uh, in the lineup. Yeah, so I think like this, this beer was probably my biggest concern going into the, the project because uh, once once we decided that, you know, we wanted to go all in on the, the, the Native American branding, the storytelling and, and all that, one of the things I, you know, realized was Mosquito Hawk, a lot of people think it sounds Native, I guess, because they have that misconception, there's a bird in it, so it must be a Native uh, reference, but it really was just a bug that I had found in my beer when I was home brewing one time. And then that beer won an award. So I used the name, the bug what people call it in Oklahoma. They call this bug a mosquito hawk. And so I was like, Oh, that's a great name. And so that's what we'd always stuck with that. Um, one thing was, I didn't think, I didn't know that people, I don't know how people felt about consuming a, a product that had a mosquito in the name, you know? Um, and then also it was the one that just didn't tie into the native, the native branding and storytelling. And so uh, we're still young enough and new enough as a brand that I thought it was, a, we could make that change without causing too big a waves. Now this is also our number two beer. Like this is, this is right there with fancy dance as far as, popularity and and sales each month and so it, it, there was going to be uh, a concern about you know changing the name um and so but this was also that opportunity to have fun and be funny and show the humor and so uh i think we went back and forth over a few different names but indian times basically you know we kind of run on our own clock there's not a lot of like uh, i'm pretty much late for everything i barely got into this call on time <laughs> it um, had to it turn went, past the hour mark just yet You're yeah <laughs> and uh you know when, when it's my son's birthday i tell my mom if the party's at noon i tell her it's at 10 and she'll show up at 12 30 that's indian time so yeah very yeah, cool and then and, and yeah, and so this is just a, a, a great opportunity to then kind of like, you know, uh, you know, fill these, you know, clocks and watches with no hands and no time, you know, to, you know, to kind of not oversell the joke about what, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, what Indian time, you know, uh, <clears throat> means to the, uh, to the community and, and to have something that had that, that humor that we wanted to make sure was, was part of the story. Yeah, I mean, like and, we, I, and we'd, we'd wondered if Indie in the way we did it, if people would get it or not. And that was always that was a concern for me. But at the same time, our goal is we're trying to tell a story and we're trying to get people to understand something. And Indie in it's a thing among natives like we all just get it. Right. And so I think even though this could confuse some people, I also feel like if that's our goal is to get people to understand who we are, then we have to do this. So. I think after the first time you read it and say it out loud, you're going to start yeah. to understand. If not, you're going to yeah. ask the question and it's going to start the dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Education. yeah. So looking at everything we've, you know, we've seen today, everything we've talked about, you all met barely a year ago, it sounds like. How long did this process take to get to those from those first conversations to the final product we're looking at today? Well, um, so I think we we started the process. We started talking about it like February, March or so. Started the process like late March. I, I want to say um, probably start to finish uh, about four months. Um, and usually something like this, it's it's about a it tends to be about a three to four month process. Um, you know, uh, so we wanted to make sure that that we did our due diligence. We did as much research as possible. Uh, and then just sort of navigating around everybody's you know schedules as well because you know uh jake is a is a busy man with the brewery with the tribe you know uh being a dad you know being a uh fiance you know so he's got a whole lot of he's spinning a lot of plates you know so um uh so yeah you know it uh uh you know i, I think that's 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 a, a good amount of you know of investment you know to to really uh absorb it and and really give us time to play honestly that was the, a big part of of between the second to last and, the, and then the final uh phase the 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 brand revealing the brand was we wanted to make sure we you know lauren played around with some different illustration styles we wanted to make sure it hit exactly as we wanted it to 
played around with some different color combinations until we felt this is where we want to be. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, it, it kind of took exactly the amount of time that it needed. I mean, the final product, even this last slide we're looking at right now, where you bring up all three cans, we had the opportunity to walk down. It's beautiful art. It brings it together. And the whole, this is native, you know, initiative is so much more than beer. And I've really enjoyed the storytelling today. I mean, I've enjoyed all the coloring in the, the designs, in the artwork, in the branding, Jake. I mean, what you and Brian create together, you know, it resonates on so many levels. But Jake, you know, what are you most proud of out of this? Oh, I think a couple of things. One is just the acceptance from our native people that have seen it. Um, you know, we we had an event the other day where we had somebody on a drum in the tap room and doing some songs that are kind of traditional stuff. We call it a 49. And there was an elder lady from another tribe in there just watching. She wasn't even drinking. She's having a soda and watching and just seeing, looking around at the place. And she came up to me at the end and put her arm around me. I didn't even know her. You know, but she came up to me and put her arm around me and told me good job of what I'm doing. And so for one of our elders to say something like that uh, meant, means a lot to me. And I get a lot of that when people see the packaging and stuff. But then the other thing, too, is just like back to the storytelling is just, you know, I think a lot of it's important for people to know that telling to you know living our culture and our and the heritage and, and that kind of stuff used to be illegal for a long time and and so a lot of those misconceptions some of the things that some people don't even realize is racist but some of those things come from us not being able to tell our story and us not being able to live live our culture out and so other people tell the story for us. Non-natives tell the story in movies and stuff like that. And so kind of like you see with the show Reservation Dogs now is we're all, a lot of us, especially the younger ones, we're starting to feel the need to tell our own story. And I think this plays a big role in that. And that's probably what I'm most proud of is now we get to represent us and not have somebody else do it for us. That's fantastic. Brian, how about you? What are you most proud of through your relationship with Jake and Skydance? I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but when we presented this, uh, I looked over and and Jake had uh, a couple of tears in his eyes, um, and that is that 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 is the most amazing feeling to create something with somebody uh, that resonates so much that you know that it's it's uh, it's it's what he needed, it's what he wanted, it's what he asked for. Um, and it was just a, a, a pride in what we were able to do to to give this to Jake. Um, so that was that was that was a big that's that that's that's what I love. You know, uh, you know, every my, my best days are writing and writing. You know, really, you know, revealing the soul of a brand and really telling that emotional story. And uh, and this was just a, the perfect opportunity to uh, to have done it. Brian, you're not lying. You're good with your words and you're good at making people choke up, right, Jake? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think what I hope a lot of our, you know, native people who see this realize is just the weight that I carry on my shoulders, you know, to make sure I represent our people in the right way. And and that I want the things that I do, I want them to be proud of it. And things like this that that Brian and his team did really allows that to happen. And, and it really helped us accomplish that. And that's why, I, yeah, I was teared up that day because I just, everything I'm doing, I just want it to be for our people, you know, and to, and to represent the right way, not just the big way, but the right way. And he Jake, really helped not, us with that. Jake, you're not only a great storyteller, you as well, Brian, but Jake, you are so inspiring. And thank you <laughs> so much for sharing your story. This is an amazing collaboration. I appreciate you both. And I'm looking forward to having beers again soon. So thank you yep. so much for both of you for sharing the story. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, thanks just, for having us, Andrew. Absolutely, yeah. You, and you need to come down, visit the studio, walk down to Skydance, grab a fancy dance. I know. I guess it's on camera now. I have to come. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Looking forward to coming to Oklahoma City to see you both. Looking to hope forward to seeing you both before too long. Thanks again for sharing this story. See you guys soon. Thanks, thanks Andrew.